Hey guys, we are continuing with Hello Dear Snick Walker, Chapter 21, Problem Number 30, 8th Edition. <coughs> Figure A shows charged particles 1 and 2 that are fixed in place on an x axis. Particle 1 has a charge uh, uh, with a magnitude of 8e, particle 3 is plus 8e is initially on x axis near particle 2 so particle 3 particle 3 of charge q3 is equal to plus 8e is initially on x axis near particle 2 <coughs> then particle 3 is gradually moved in the positive direction of x axis as a result the magnitude of the net electrostatic force on particle 2 due to particles 1 and 3 change changes figure 3 gives the x component of that net force as a function of position x of particle 3. The scale of x axis is set by xs is equal to 0 0.8 meters. The plot has an asymptote of uh, uh, 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 25 newtons as x tends to inf infinity. As a multiple of e and including the sign, what is the charge q? Q2 of particle Q of particle 2. So, uh, we are given three particles. Particle 1 is fixed. Particle 2 is fixed. Particle 3 is initially very close to 2 and then moved along x axis away from particle 2. If particle 3 is moved away from particle 2, then force on 2 from 3 will change, will dec decrease in this case. Well, if uh, force on 2 changes from 3, then net force on particle 2 will also ch change. Now, that net force, how does that vary with the change in, by changing position of uh, particle 3, which is represented by x, x, is given by this graph, okay, is given by this graph. Now, uh, so uh, magnitude of charge Q1 is given, but we don't know if it's positive or negative. Q3 is positive, that is given. You can see Q1 and Q3 are having same magnitudes, 8E and 8E. The x axis is set by this xs, the scale is set by xs, 0 0.8 uh, meters. So this is here 0 0.8 meters. So uh, we have four divisions up to 0 0.8. So each division is 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, then 0 0.6, and then 0 0.8. As x tends to infinity, now this is important bit of information. As x tends to infinity means particle 3 is at infinity. If particle 3 is at infinity, it won't exert any force on particle 2 because if distance is infinity, force is zero then force on particle 2 will be only because of 1. And this graph tells us that, uh, that net force on particle 1 at that time is 1.5 into 10 to the power, this is 10 here, 10 to the power minus 20, uh, 25 newtons. Okay, we have to find out Q2 along with its sign. Two things we have to take care of while finding Q2. One, we have to find it in terms of E and the other we have to find its sign also. So first we'll talk about the sign. Okay, first we'll talk about the sign. I consider the situation where particle 3 is at infinity. 3 is at infinity. I'll consider that situation. <clears throat> this one here. If 3 is at infinity. Then the only force on 2 will be from 1. Okay. If only force on 2 will be from 1. <coughs> uh, excuse me, I'm having some trouble here. Net force on 2 will be only from 1. Net force on 2 will be equal to F21. Okay, net force on 2 will be equal to F21. Because 3 does not exert any force. 3 is at infinity, so its force will be 0. And from the graph, we know that that force, when x goes to infinity, that force. <coughs> is somewhere here which is positive okay that force is positive positive means it's in the positive direction 
Okay, positive means it is in the positive di direction. So here it is. F21. It is in the positive direction. Clearly, you can see that 1 is repelling 2. Okay, force on 2 from 1 is away from 1. So 1 is repelling 2. If 1 is repelling 2, then 1 and 2 must be like. Must be like charges. So 1 and 2 must have same signs. If 1 is positive, the other one will be also positive. If uh, 1 is negative, the other one will also be negative. So this is the conclusion about the signs regarding 1 and 2. They must be like. We don't know if they are, both of them are positive or both of them are negative. We don't know that. We just know they are like charges. Either both of them are positive or both of them are negative. Now we will consider the situation where... 3, particle 3 is very close to 2, okay, particle 3 is very close to 2, or let's consider this situation, because anyways we have to use this, let's consider this situation, <coughs> where net force is equal to 0, where net force is equal to 0, and remember that, uh, 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 that position is 0 0.4, this is 0 0.8, so this must be 0 0.4. So now, <coughs> particle 1, particle 2, and particle 3. 3 is at a distance of 0 0.4 meters. 1 and 2 are light charges. So that part we already concluded. That part we already concluded. So 1 will repel 2 force on 2 from 1 will be this way. Now net force is 0 at x equal to at x equal to 0, 0 0.4 meters. Now that x is distance between 2 and 3. Uh, remember particle 2 is at the origin. So whatever is the position of particle 3 that is the distance between partic particle 2 and 3. So this is r23 basically. r23 distance between 2 and 3 is 0. 4 meters. What happens at 0 0.4 meters? Net force on particle 2 is 0. Net force on particle 2 is 0. Now we know particle 2 experiences two forces, one from particle 1 and the other from particle 3. And net force of two forces is 0, zero only if the two forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So the other force on 2 must be in this direction and that force is from 3. So this is force on 2 from 3. Only when F23 is in, in this direction, then only there is a chance that the two forces will cancel out. Then there is a chance that net force is 0. Now that we know net force is 0, so it has to be opposite to F21. So clearly you can see 3 is also repelling 2. Okay, 3 is also repelling 2. If 3 is repelling 2, then 2 and 3 are like charges. Okay. 2 and 3 are light charges. 2 and 3 are light charges. Now, uh, earlier we concluded that 1 and 2 are light charges. And now we conclude that 2 and 3 are light charges. 1 is like 2, 2 is like 3. That means all of them are light char charges. 1, 2 and 3 are light charges. 1, 2 and 3 are light charges. Now, if 1 is positive, all 3 are positive. If 1 is negative, all 3 are negative. We know Q3 is positive. So, if Q3 is positive, then Q2 is also positive. Then Q1 is also positive. All the 3 are positive charges. Okay? All the 3 are. So, uh, we now know the sign of charge Q2, which is positive. Okay? Which is, forgive me for this. <coughs> okay. Now, we have to find out the value of Q2. Okay. We have to find out value of Q2. Okay, one more thing here. Since at this distance of 0 0.4 meters, when particle 3 is at distance of 0 0.4 meters, then the two forces are equal and opposite. Okay, equal and opposite. Now, F23 is from 3 and F21 is from 1. 
Now we already know that this is 8e, particle 1 is having a charge of 8e, particle 2 is having a charge of 8e. Charges are same, so for two forces to be same, distances must also be same. So this must be also 0 0.4 meters. It is simple from uh, Coulomb's law. F23 <coughs> is equal to F21 gamma q2 q3 divided by r23 squared is equal to gamma q2 q1 divided by r21 squared okay gamma and gamma cancels out q2 and q2 cancels out q3 and q1 are same both are 8e so this will also cancel out cross multiply f2 r21 squared is equal to r23 squared so r21 is equal to r23 both are having same values so if this is 0 0.8 0 0.4 then this distance between 1 and 2 is also 0 0.4 0 0.4 so that is evident that particle 1 and 3 are at same distances from particle 2 when net force on the particle is 0 so 1 and 2 now we know they are separated by 0 0.4 meters 0 0.4 meters okay now we will consider the situation when x is equal to infinity, x tends to infinity rather, which means r23 tends to infinity. Particle 3 is at infinite distance, okay, infinite distance. So we have particle 1 here, we have particle 2 here, particle 3 is at infinity. Particle 3 is at infinity. So net force on particle 2 is only from 1 and that net force is this way. Remember we already concluded that two charges are like charges. So net force on 2 is equal to F21 which is given 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 25. 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 25. 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 25 newtons okay minus 25 now f21 we'll use coulomb's law gamma q2 q1 divided by r21 squared is equal to 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 25 so this implies q2 is equal to 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 25 r21 will take upstairs which is 0 0.4 meters but with the square then divided by q1 will take downstairs and that q1 is 8e gamma will also take downstairs gamma is 9 into 10 to the power 9 and then q1 is 8e 8e remember we had to find out q2 in terms of e in terms of e so i'll multiply by e and divide by e so in the denominator we'll have e square okay e into e so let's uh, substitute the values of e so q2 is equal to 1.5 into 10 to the power into 10 to the power minus 25 into 0 0.4 squared this e will leave uh, it like that we have 9 into 10 to the power 9 into 8 e into e is e squared which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 squared and this e is as it is okay now <coughs> you have to work out this thing q2 is equal to i have already done that is comes out to be 13 with this e there with this e now already we know q2 is positive remember all the three are like charges all of them are positive so if we write this result with sign with sign q2 is equal to plus 13e q2 is equal to plus 13e okay, is that fine so that's what we are asked to find out fine right?